Welcome, everyone. This is Glenda Carlin. I'm this is my weekly A Course of Miracles meeting. Although sometimes I don't have this Tuesday night meeting if I'm being a speaker or if I'm participating in one day or two day retreats with this Lama Surya Dawson, this group, because I need I need downtime following those workshops to assimilate and integrate what I've learned. So I'll always put it in an email and I'm trying to update the cover sheet that's on this Zoom meeting that say when I'm not having a course meeting. The next time I know for sure is March. And it's, I'll put this in this recording, March 7th, because I'll be in a six day retreat up in Garrison, New York with that Lama Surya Das. So there will not be a course uh, meeting March 7th or the following Tuesday, March 14th. Those two weeks. Okay, so, um, oh, and for those that can't come live, that's why I record this and put it on a YouTube channel. And I, oh, I have to write this down. This is funny, isn't it? It's called Glenda Carlin, A Course in Miracles YouTube. So you can look at this later. Okay, good. See, uh, Elle figured out something's wrong. She'll be coming back in. But what I like to do, first thing right off the bat, is to invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, and ascend, ascended masters to be here, help us, guide us, guide me what to do or say. And, and each person here, God, inspire you all and help us have fun as well. Now, they're all, uh, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, and light beings are always here, but they'll never, ever intrude. That's why during the day, that's going to be one of the 10 things that I practice every day is to invite in Holy Spirit to, to help me. But I'll list them all. I'll list Jesus, Buddha, and light beings, ascended masters. I name them all. <laughs> and then when it says enlightened beings, you all may not realize it, but when you call in them, you're calling in the millions of enlightened beings that have awakened since time began. They're all here. They're all here in the in spirit, wanting to help us. So it's a big deal. Thanks, Al, for coming back in. Good. You can probably hear now. Thank you. Thank you. I kept talking and you could hear. I knew, well, she'll figure it out and come back in. So thank you. Thank you. Besides inviting in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, and light means to send a message. So the next big thing I do is acknowledge each of you as the Christ, Buddha, God that you are. Now, in the course, this used to kind of freak me out in that I didn't really want to think of somebody as God or sure as heck not think of myself as God till, till finally I ran upon lesson 183. And in that lesson, um, because I copied that at the, the entire lesson at the bottom, at the bottom of this other document where Jesus says, repeat the name of God and call upon yourself whose name is his. That's lesson 183, paragraph five. Repeat the name of God and call upon yourself whose name is his. And I'll be reading some more about that later, but I'm just explaining why I'm going to do what I'm going to do next. I say your name and then I say the word God next. So uh, welcome Alvaro, God. Welcome Joanne, God. Welcome Barbie, God. Welcome Angela, God. Welcome Leon, God. Welcome Nance, God. Welcome Elle, God. Welcome Julia, God. Welcome Sean, God. Welcome Francis, God. And Glenda, welcome God, Glenda, God. Because but I found in my course studies, first I had to get to where I could even consider that you all were Christ or Buddha. That'll come first, although you could have enough grounding and understanding to jump right to be able to say God to everything. But it's part of what I call in this Lama Surya Das that I practice with, it does Dzogchen Buddhism. It's not your typical Buddhism, just like this course is not your typical spiritual work. These are 
the Course and Zotin are direct paths where the Course says you are the Christ. You are the Christ nature now. You've just, and God, you've just forgotten. You're just asleep here. And Zotin Buddhism does the same thing. You are Buddha now. Now, other times, not all the time, but Lama Surya Das will say in different meetings that there's only the path of source, God. Whatever, and you can call it all kinds of names, the living Tao, the living force, um, uh, God. It, it can, goes by many names. It does not matter. All the Islam names, all that whatever they call source, source, creator, origin of all things. It just means there is a power that that it that is one. And that oneness we don't experience except when there's samadhi, when you actually dissolve and connect the mind to this spirit, this presence, this vast expanse. And before you know it, you're just rejoined with it. And later you come back and you realize, hold it, I was gone for a, a little bit. Because in union or oneness, you don't have subject and object. You don't have awareness of anything. So that's why in samadhi, in non-dualism, you're not aware until you come back out of it. It's like you can research that word samadhi on, on Google. It's like a blackout where you're just in the vast expanse, but there's no subject and object. So in the course and Dzogchen, it's teaching the highest thing you can really attain in dualism is to have awakened awareness, to have the awareness that there are children of God, all these brothers, all these sentient beings are our brothers, one in this origin of all things. And, and you're aware of it, you're aware of it and live that way. And you embody the Christ, the Buddha nature, the God nature, love, you know, generosity, compassion, empathy, all these characteristics of love and, and, and Christ, Buddha, God, Holy Spirit, because God really doesn't know anything about all this, although I say the word God. Holy Spirit uses your hands, your speech, your ears, your eyes to help your brothers awake them from the dream. That's the highest thing you can accomplish in this du dual world and be aware of it. You become awakened to your enlightened, your form becomes enlightened because the body is an image in the mind. And when the mind becomes illumined because the body is an image in the mind, then your body becomes illumined. It's, it's just, it's just the way it is. Granted, the body is, is a false image, but you walk around here just like Jesus did as an enlightened soul, enlightened being, helping your brothers wake up. So the body is used, your, your, the form is used to help uh, your brothers awaken. But anyway, so, um, um, now I, this talk that I'm giving tonight is the talk that Gonzalo Lever coordinated a one-day workshop at a, a at a church called the Temple of the Living God in in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I was one of four speakers. And this was uh, this topic of ten practices that I looked back over the years, a practice in the course. And there's ten major things I've done to help me get to the point where I am where I can be aware of oneness, be aware of oneness and have this awakened awareness, but it's a constant deepening. And I, 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 I implore each of you or want you to know you'll have hundreds, if not thousands of life experiences, revelations, and you just keep, you just keep uh, relaxing, resting in that light, in the Christ Buddha nature, God nature, and, and stay relaxed and surrendered, asking Holy Spirit to sh guide you what to do or say, but to also allow all these spiritual truths to go deeper and deeper into your understanding and your, and your inspiration, and not for you not to have, it's called premature immaculation. 
which means you think you're awakened and ego jumps on it and says, oh, you don't need to study anymore. You don't need to meditate. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. Because, oh, this is so deep. This is all so deep. And uh, it only opens and opens you to this vast, this vast Buddha, Christ, God, loving nature and how to look at your brother's how, how to be inspired by your brothers. Oh, and how to live in the flow, how to live in the flow of all these other bodies coming and going. And, and you're watching TV, you're still doing your normal things, going to the doctor, going to the grocery store. But a, as you do in this normal life, you real and practice the course and any other parallel truths. What you realize is there's no accident. The course teaches that there are no accidents in salvation because your every encounter is a holy encounter if you remember that's what it is and if that's how you think of your brother there are no accidents he says do not leave any of your brother without giving him salvation because in essence then you haven't given yourself salvation so your your the flow means things are coming and going out in front of you as projections from the mind the personal mind and the collective ego mind. And then images are just in your mind that come when you're sitting in your chair, you start thinking of someone or something. That's an image. There's no accident. Holy Spirit's bringing you that image for you to practice advanced forgiveness on it and to think of your brother or spirit. That's the bottom line for all, nearly all of these practices of what shows up in front of your face and, and images in your mind. Because as you think of your brother, you think of yourself. So anyway, so you just keep practicing. That's what I keep doing. I just keep practicing. Okay, now I want to get to these 10 points. And the first one, I, I kind of changed the sequence, but I realized the first point is that will speed your process along the way is to put sticky notes, notes around your house, on your computer, on your bathroom mirror, in your car, wherever you need them. Because the one major thing is, I found we forget to practice. Because until you integrate and practice this, that's where you're going to get the results. And you're going to, uh, you'll get these more, you'll get light experiences and um, other revelations or insights will come to you. Um, but the, the thing is, it's called faking it while you make it. Because I look back on this, I didn't believe that anybody was Christ or Buddha. I tell you all this, I didn't believe it. I, I did it. But I had faith that the course, Jesus, by writing the course, he knew what he was doing. And he told us to practice, apply these lessons and, and practice advanced forgiveness. But the sticky notes, this is number six on the list, but I want to read what I kind of wrote. It'll remind me what I want to, what, what I might have thought of when I was two, three, when I was writing this. Mm. I'm on sticky notes. Oh, here. Okay. Then set an alarm to remind you to practice an alarm. You know, I a phone, so have alarms or however you want to do it. Boy, it's a big deal to set an alarm. And then, and then practice mindfulness. Now, mindfulness may be one of these points. I believe it is one of them, but I want to, then I'll talk it. Mindfulness. Then this will be number two. It's called the Bell of Mindfulness. And Thich Nhat Hanh has written written books about. It. He's an enlightened monk. But what I found is, like I I walk morning and evening, or I'll be outside working in my yard or whatever, or I'm in my house. You want to designate in this book. He talks about you can use a you can use a sound, you can use a taste, 
You can use uh, something that you see, like every time you go to the refrigerator or wash dishes, it's called a bell of mindfulness, which means, well, let me go back to what mine was. I picked a sound of a car. Every time I heard a car, because picture I'm out walking, hear a car in the distance, immediately I stop I, in my mind, I go to my mind and I think about what was it thinking? What was that? Because that mind is not you. These thoughts are not you. They're random egoic thoughts going along or sometimes there's the voice for God, Holy Spirit talking. But typically these thoughts are not you. Well, even Holy Spirit, even though you're one with Holy Spirit. But I'm, I go to my mind and I'm thinking, I'm looking at, I'm become aware, what's my mind thinking? If it's thinking about an image, then I immediately start practicing Jesus' advanced forgiveness, which I say all of it to that image. And then I, real, I, I look around to where I'm at. There could be a house, could be a, a, a pedestrian or something. Boy, I immediately look at that house and I'll think of all of it as the people in that house. I may know the people in the house or may not. That's called a bell of mindfulness, meaning either a sound, a sight is a, a bell. Now, Thich Nhat Hanh, what he did, he had a village called Primrose Village, I believe it's called. They would randomly during the day ring this huge bell and even little children would stop what they're doing. Everybody, I'm not kidding. Everybody stopped what they were doing and they practice this divine thinking. It's a pause to think divinely. Okay, it's called a bell of mindfulness. Okay, the next one is Jesus's advanced forgiveness. And I didn't know what that was for from 20, 2004 to 2014. None of the teachers I went to for the course, if they talked about advanced forgiveness, I sure didn't get it. But in 2014, I read Gary Bernard's Disappearance of the Universe. And in that book, I was divinely led to that book. I won't take time to talk about that story. But that book talks about advanced forgiveness and what it means. And then I go, then I searched the course because I had it back then in 2014. You paid for a, a DVD of the Course in Miracles. And it was a DVD player in my laptop or computer. And I could search it for words and I searched for that forgiveness and then found where Jesus says you, it's your choice whether you look at the body, the flesh or spirit. And he said in other places, he says, look beyond the body, past the body to the spirit that's there. And then in Renard's book, the uh, Ascended Master says, basically just say all of it to every image that shows up in front of the face. Now, I couldn't always remember to do that, but I'd have my sticky notes to remind me, oh yeah. And then maybe midday, I'd go, well, who was it I saw today that I forgot to practice forgiveness on and I'd practice forgiveness on them, simply just saying all of it, all of it. Then at the end of the day, I look back over my day. What images did I run into? Who was I thinking about that day? And I practiced events uh, forgiveness on them and again I didn't believe any I didn't know what all of it meant I didn't believe these people were were spirit Christ Buddha but what happens is and the course talks about it this gains momentum if you keep practicing it has a cumulative effect it builds momentum and you'll start to believe once in a while that these people are Christ or Buddha or God because picture this, there's only one mind, only one mind. And somewhere in the course, it says everything you say or do is to you, for you and about you. Because in that one mind, whatever I'm thinking or saying, it goes into that one mind and it goes in the at the unconscious level. Once these judgments and opinions and perceptions go into that unconscious mind, the only person that can get to that is Holy Spirit, only entity. But if you do your advanced forgiveness, meaning think about your brother, any of these people, even dogs, anything, animals, trees, God, God, Christ, Buddha, everything, mailboxes, it does not matter. All of it, because it's animate, inanimate. It's all, 
in the bottom line, it's all filled with spirit. That because there's only spirit, there's only light, there's only God radiating through everything. It's like a hologram. And scientists have proved this. There's really no images here. There's there's just space and light radiating. That's really all there is. But anyway, that if you practice this forgiveness, doing it one or two times a day, it is not sequential. Holy Spirit will, it's not one for one. You do your forgiveness for Holy Spirit. It could be a thousand to one. I'm not sure. It could be 10,000 to one that he goes into the unconscious mind and heals unconscious guilt and judgments. All these things through this lifetime that where I, uh, it's judging people to both ways, good and bad. Good and bad are both an illusion. Both are illusion. Love and hate are, are illusion too. But practicing the course and this Zochin, we get to then finally we're loving everything. Then we even rise above that to realize in the oneness, there's no feelings. There's no feelings. There isn't. There's no, because there's no subject or object. But in this duality, when you're loving everything, you feel more love. You feel the love that you are in this realm. You feel it. It builds on itself. So, and in Gary Renard's books, those acidic masters will talk about, because Gary will say to him, it seems like nothing's happening. And they will tell him, yes, it seems like nothing's happening, but you keep practicing because Holy Spirit's healing the unconscious mind. Then ultimately, you know something's happening because you feel more peaceful and loving. And when you used to react and stay reacting or upset about something for two days, three days a week, maybe you're only upset for a day, half a day, 15 minutes. That's how you know. And, and how you know you're advancing is when you're aware. That you, you're, that's another point that's in here somewhere. You become aware of your feelings and your mood. You want to become aware of your feelings and your mood. And then you, then you stop and you ask, you look in your mind and ask yourself, well, what was I thinking about? And if you think, if you sit with that, you'll come with an image of a person that, that I've judged, that I, I we've judged if it's politicians, an actor family members, whatever it is, it's something. When I do my walks, if I, I'm watching the ego, uh, because you, you end up, you learn to watch and observe your thoughts. You are uh, the awareness. You're the Christ, Buddha, God, nature, aware with this awakened awareness, aware of what's coming and going in front of your face. And you're aware of your thoughts and you'll see ego judging the size of people, their height, their color, anything they do, cars, the whole whole thing. Ego is just, um, it is judging constantly. That's all it does. Labeling, sorting, categorizing. <laughs> it's, that's all it does. <laughs> good and bad. Sorting things good and bad. Okay. Now that's practicing Jesus's. Oh, and in practicing Jesus advanced forgiveness, that's part of it also when you're calling out is calling somebody God, or you can call him Christ, or you can call him Buddha, or you can call all of it. In that document I wrote, it gives you different things you can say. The next is, I forget what number I'm at, I'm just going to keep going. Turn each day over to Holy Spirit. And during the day, when I recognize that I'm off on a tangent, I'll turn my the day back over to Holy Spirit again. Because um, because he's the higher, he's representative of the higher power. And, and Jesus in the enlightened state is Holy Spirit as well. But, and then in the course, this is in chapter, section four, chapter four, IV eight, is, he, uh, Jesus says, judge how well you have done this, meaning thinking of your brother as spirit, by your feelings, for this is the one right use of judgment. The one right use of judgment is your feelings. That's huge. So if I feel it irritated, angry, super excited, you know, still even loving, you can feel loving. Don't get me wrong. Love is love. You want to love everything. But love is impermanent too, because everybody's going to die. 
So you're wanting to think of these people as spirits. So you're not like just blindsided, like, oh, God, they died. <laughs> or they're real sick. I mean, this is impermanence. This is because that's called attachment. In Dzogchen Buddhism, I learned attachment is I want it. I want this relationship. I want this, uh, uh, you know, you're just super attached to this relationship. And the other problem is aversion that's going to be covered. This is going to be one of them where we're pushing things away. We don't want it. We hate it. Love or hate, aversion or attachment. Um, but you're aware of your feelings and then you let go. You simply, you take this deep breath in. This is one of them too, if I forget it is the breath work. You take a deep breath in from about two inches below the navel, deep breath in, and you can hold it for a second or two. And then you exhale saying, ah, ah, A-H, ah, ah. And you can even waller your mouth around, ah, ah, ah. This is relaxing your form and you're really letting go of any thoughts you've had. You do that three times in a row. You really, you really are, are getting relaxed and out of that feeling, and you're remembering whatever you were thinking about that you were irritated or upset about, and then immediately practice advanced forgiveness on it. Then in chapter four, IV, I forget which paragraph this is, Jesus says, when your mood tells you that you've chosen wrongly, and this is so whenever you are not joyous. So we're using our mood and feelings to tell us when we're judging, when we've not listened, we're not thinking with Holy Spirit. Um, now that's that's turning your each day over to Holy Spirit. That's what he wants you to be aware of, your mood and your feelings. Another one is you're, during the day, you'll be studying, contemplating the course or some parallel truth like um, that's what you, that's what you want to do too. You're studying these truths, and and by practicing these truths and doing integrating whatever those truths into your life, because like in the course, Jesus says, apply this truth every fifteen minutes or every thirty minutes. Look out, and apply it on what what's there or thoughts in your mind. Your in a, this becomes you're integrating this truth into your life you're living it you're practicing it it's and then you stabilize when i look back on me i realize i then stabilize that particular truth stabilizes meaning i'm more often to like if one is empathy like have an empathy with my brothers that they're uh, feeling uh, somebody's ill or they're feeling upset or empathy for ones that are in a war zone feeling feeling empathy for them then as you feel empathy and empathy means you're aware of their what they're what you're what, you become aware that they're suffering and the Dzogchen Buddhism and the course talk, talks about it in different subtle ways that I never put together that was what was good about the Dzogchen they talk about and but Jesus says uh, it's it's how you think of your brother. So uh, in Dzogchen, it's about caring how, that your brother is suffering. There's a caring. You don't take on his suffering, but you're aware of the suffering. And and there it, and then as you take your breath and you pause and relax and see their image in your mind. And think of them as spirit, God, or Christ, or Buddha, and wish them well. Wish them well and for healing. Holy Spirit, help them however you can. I, I don't know how they what's for their highest good. I just am putting them in your hands. But you're empathetic. You're compassionate. I can't tell you that I was not empathetic and compassionate all those years. I was so hard on practicing. Um, this advanced forgiveness. And I was so hard on practicing that I wasn't a body that I didn't even want to think about the body could ever get enlightened and radiate light or that I could be empathetic to a brother. I'm not kidding you. It was, I was just pretty hardcore about this. I had blinders on, 
but it can save you years of work if you open up to that your brother is yourself. And if he's suffering, then that's why you can kind of feel his suffering. And you you want to you want to visualize him being healed by Holy Spirit in whatever way he, Holy Spirit's going to do this. You don't know. And the other thing is we can't judge that something ever, ever is healed. Well, well bottom line, the first thing is we don't want to see him. We don't want to think of him as sick or needing healing. But I'm just saying you're empathetic and you turn it over to Holy Spirit. Because as you think of him is how you're thinking of yourself. If he can be sick, then you can be sick, right? And, and the course talks about that. We do not want to see our brother as sick. But it happens all day long. You see somebody sick or suffering. But you don't have to take it on. But yet you can acknowledge their Christ Buddha and ask Holy Spirit to help them. Um, and it's called dedication of merit. When you meditate or when you sit in the silence or practice any of these lessons and you feel peaceful and loving, that's merit. That's merit. You don't want to hang on to that love and peace that you feel and tranquility, you want to actually disperse it. You want to disperse it and dedicate it to all your brothers, however, whatever sentence you want to use, let it go. Dedicate it to all your brothers. Don't be selfish and hold this stuff all inside of you. And see, I did that. I didn't know you should let all this stuff go because there's all only our brothers. Oh man, I don't know which number that is, but empathy and compassion and dedicating the merit of, of these, this goodness and the, this love that comes from the practice of the course. Um, that was under study, reflecting, contemplating, and integrating um, these truths. Now, when you pause, just so you know, when you pause a second, and then you think about one of these lessons in the course that Jesus is asking you to do, that pause before you go do it, that's called a sacred pause. And again, you re had to remember to go do this lesson, right? But that's a sacred pause. You can even just take that, those in breath and exhale all and relax, relax into that pause. That's called the fourth time. It's not the past, let's see, past, future, or present. Those are the three to three path, the uh, non-existent realms of time. The now, this holy now, that pause between thoughts or pause between you think of something and then when you do it, where there's nothing going on, that's that's a vast Christ mind, the vast, spacious, luminous Christ mind, your mind, God mind, that pause. Just relax right there and rest. It's called resting. You just rest there for a second. Then you go do your work. It's a big deal um, to recognize that there's, a, that there's a gap or a pause between thoughts as you study, reflect, and contemplate these truths. Because you're wanting to, and that's why we, it's called a practice. You're developing your own practice where you're applying these truths. And again, you don't have to believe them. And, and don't believe me about that you don't have to believe them. Go read the introduction to the workbook in A Course of Miracles. There are paragraphs in that workbook introduction where Jesus basically says, you don't have to understand anything. Just do it. It's in the use of these lessons that you'll have this experiential ex this experience. And that's what you're going for, this experience of that pause where you rest in the stillness or that that moment, that loving feeling, the feeling of spaciousness, it, it feeling of vastness, feeling of light, just visualizing that pure, clear light or col any colored light. That's holiness. That's been, anyway. Um, and the next one is to let go of the person you used to be. <laughs> This whole Course in Miracles is teed in the Dzogchen Buddhism I do. All those lessons are wanting you to let go of this false ego and that your culture 
your beliefs that you're male, female, the roles you had in life, your education. Now, granted, we and never, ever put our body in harm's way. Never, ever. And we need to call 911. We call 911. And then as soon as we can, we practice advanced forgiveness on all the people that showed up and everybody involved in the activity. I'm a very practical person. I fought, go straight down the middle of the road. I'm not off in the ditch on either direction too much. Only, holy, holy practice. You forget to budget, forget to go to the grocery store, blah, blah, blah. Or the other side, you go, oh, none of this means anything. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to not do anything. We well, see, in the illusion, that brings up a point. I'll check the clock. Is people ask, because in the course it says, um, the single mad idea, there was a single mad idea that the, the, the son of God forgot to laugh at. That single mad idea is he believed he was a form, a body, that a spirit and light was inside this body and he forgot he's spirit and light and imprisoned himself as a body. So then he fell asleep and that's what you're awakening from. You're awakening from this sleep that you're a body and that all your brothers are a body and you've forgotten what, and somewhere in the course, it's in this document I sent, I think, the main thing that Jesus says quickly is to know thyself which you're wanting to remember, your Christ, your Buddha, your God. But you're remembering this is this whole course is to you is to get you to remember what you are, but to remember what you are, you got to let go of the person that you used to be, which is, and that when I look back on it, is these judgments and perceptions and culture that I live from makes dark thoughts, and I feel like a dense body, dense, thick body. A, a shadow it's just dense it's thick as you let go practice all these things we're talking about you're letting go of judgments just like this the onion your spark or arc of lights in the middle of an onion and the onion layers are all these judgments and perceptions we've had over all these years that get peeled away you do you peel some away holy spirit peels the predominant stuff away so finally the onion all the layers are gone and the arc of light is released. And in the course, that document that I word processed and where I found all the great ray, arc of light, spark of light, Jesus says the arc of light must be released first to know the great ray. And the great ray is a is connects you to eternity. And and I have you picture a huge, this is per Holy Spirit to picture a huge sun above the head. There's an art, there's a, there's a ray, just like you go look at the sun in the sky, everything kind of is duplicate or represents source and truth. There's a ray that comes off of, and it comes straight down the top of your head, through your body, into the ground. And Sean was talking about near-death experiences. People that have that, where they see, they'll come back and say, oh, I saw, there was a tunnel. I saw a tunnel, and the end of the tunnel was a light bright light and then I heard a voice that said hey, it's not your time go on back home or there'll be things that they saw or experienced but what they're looking up in they're looking up in their great ray that connects them to eternity and at the end of it is the huge sun source who's wanting to radiate all this light down into your body and open up all these chakras and light centers and subtle energy fields in your form and will ultimately do that because you will be a light body. You will embody Christ, Buddha, light, God, light, because you are light. The Force says you are the light of the world. It is literal. The thing, I just want to make sure I got that in there, that you're looking up in the great, they're looking up in the uh, great ray light. Here's a book called Letting Go of the Person You Used to Be. Literally, letting, name of letting go of the person you used to be. I studied this book big time with the course by this Lama Surya Das. Lama and Surya is S-U-R-Y-A D-A-S, Das. He will never ever say he's enlightened, but that man in, they, they, in Tibetan Buddhism, they these Tibetan people, Oriental people, they've spent thousands of years contemplating how to enlightenment and awakening from this delusion, the delusion and samsara, they call it in Buddhism. They've got this down pat. This woman, Sridhar, has been through two, three-year, three-month retreats. 
that were called Llama Train Training Retreat. He knows how to help people. And so he writes these, book, these books, Letting Go of the Person You Used to Be. And the other one I found really helpful is Make Me One with Everything. Make Me One with Everything. In these books, he's got lessons and things I do, meditations, et cetera. That's, that's this point, let go of the person you used to be. And I want to just read here. I want to reiterate because I have to say I was the worst at, at wanting to ignore the body. And I hated it when people talked about the body. And it, I was just in the mind, mind only, mind only. Well, the... The course teaches, and it's true, the body, all these are images in the mind. That's true. They are. But they're projected out in, they're projected out here in front of us. But they're still images in the mind. We're mentally reviewing what's already gone by. That's what Jesus says in the course. We're mentally reviewing what's already gone by. Now. This comes back to something I wanted to say a while ago, but I forgot. So I'm going to say it now. So what the heck have you been mentally reviewing that's already gone by? People think they're making choices. Well, you're not. Why, why are there mystics, people that are clairvoyant? They can tell you the future. They can, they can. How can they know the future? That means all these possible events have already been done. And that's what Jesus says in the Course. In the split second that we had the thought of separation, immediately in a split second, God created Holy Spirit, the call, the voice to bring us back home. And in that split second, we went from sleep to awaken. But that in time is can be seem like billions of years or thousands of years. But what happened in that split second Man, it's miraculous how all this works. I can't even, I don't even, can't really get, gather it all, but I just know this is true for me, is in that instant, all possible choices for each of you, and picture there's 8 billion people, or however many there are, are in, in this mentally reviewing. A script, a, it says a script's already written, well, that's the script, these millions or billions of choices. So picture like, uh, let's see, the other day, like I'm, I'm getting ready to get in my car to uh, go somewhere. I forget where I was going. And the thought came, I forget, I was, I looked in the uh, mirror, as you know, side mirrors I got in the car. There was a thought that showed up to me. And I almost got in my car. I went, oh, no. So whatever that thought was, I went back in the house and I did it. Now, picture, if I had gotten my car and left my house right then, I would be in a certain dimension of time and space. I'd be, I'd be off driving on the road a certain time, right? Then I would be meeting up with whatever was going to show up right then in front of my face, right? But when I went in the house and did whatever I did, I went into a different choice, a different dimension of time and space. Well, picture during the day how many times you do stuff like that. How you'll think of doing one thing, but the, the mind gives you another thought. And you, that's called spontaneous living. And you go and do that thought. Maybe you remember, oh, yeah, I needed to go water the flowers. I forgot to do that. And then you go do the flowers. And that puts you outside to maybe see a neighbor or do something and say something to them that was nice, loving, or or you remember to think of them as spirit. I don't know. But the point is, that's why you think you're making choices. You're, but in essence, you're making one of the choices of, of, of maybe a billion things that are already in the script. But you're being guided by Holy Spirit. That's the difference. See, I, that thought wasn't random because Gary Renard talks about that in one of his books. He was upset. I'm going fast folks, because he was upset. He was talking to art in person that he had gone to some movie he really didn't like. And he asked him, why did I go to that movie? And they told him, if you had not gone to that movie and gone to the one you wanted, you would have been in a horrible car accident. So what I now understand is 
that thought, Glenda, go back in your house and do that. That's not my thought. That's Holy Spirit putting a thought. It's putting a thought in my mind. And it's my choice whether I go do it or not. But I'm now, I'm surrendered to what seems to be in the flow, what's showing up in front of my face, what's showing up in my mind. But, but I'm not a doormat psychologically or physically. Don't get me wrong. That's why there's psychotherapists and police and all those. We do, are not doormats. We help our brothers. We, we never are gentle, kind to ourselves. But I wanted to make sure I clarified that. You're, um, because so thoughts are not all bad. See, I don't want to label thoughts good, you know, except we're, uh, we're sorting true from false. That is the difference. We're sorting true from false. The truth is your brother is spirit, God, versus thinking of them as abiding. These truths, as you do the course lessons, you're learning, you're learning to sort and be aware of true and false. And that's what Jesus says somewhere in the course. You're no different from me. I just learned to sort true from false, which you have yet to do. It's something like that. So you're learning to sort true from false. Now I'm looking at the time, so I need to get on here. Meditating daily. If I had not started meditating daily, that started about two years ago in June, I think it was, daily with a Zochin LA group out of LA. I learned to do sky gazing meditation because prior to then I was trying to meditate to repress thoughts. And that is, that is a no, 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 no. The thoughts are never going to stop. No, they're never going to stop. We, that's the, uh, what we're developing is a gap between the thoughts. And in sky gazing, it's like looking at the sky and seeing clouds and letting clouds come and go. We can't go up there and control the clouds. Well, the thoughts in the mind, we can't control these thoughts either. We're, we're, we're choosing thoughts, but anyway. But the clouds come and go. You can't tell the birds when to fly, come and they go. Well, the same thing happens in meditation. When you're meditating, if I don't attach or, or aversion, push a thought away, meaning I grab onto a thought, those thoughts are going to come and go like clouds in the sky. Oh, and I have, I, I can't dwell too long on this concept, but this is such a holy, holy, holy truth because thoughts, you want thoughts to come and go in your mind and you want images to come and go. You'll ultimately let images come and go out in front of you without you having attachment and aversion. But you never put your body in harm's way. That's called meditating daily. And you learn with by doing that, you learn inter meditation, I N T E R meditation, where you feel maybe for a second or two a union with somebody with your leader's breath during meditation. That's inner meditation. You had a union with a breath, that's a big deal, or a sound. Or a word drew you in to the, the vast, uh, let you relax and go into the vast expanse or vast emptiness or silence um, called intermeditation. And as you do that, it's called the yogi yoga of convergence, connection, spontaneous oneness. It's huge. If you, when you feel any little split second of union with a sound, a word, a, a, a space, then you're gaining comp. That's the purpose of meditation is to get that gap, that space between words and to let not have attachment and aversion. Okay, now I'm going to look real fast down here. Um, taking refuge and rest taking refuge and rest. Now that comes during meditation, but then you practice it outside of meditation. And what that means is you take refuge and rest in, there's three things, the truth, the Buddhists call it Dharma. See, the course is truth. Rest, that means you that moment you just, just surrender, relax your shoulders, take that breath and let it go out and relax into that truth. That's called rest. You just rest 
in that truth, that dharma. Then it's called rest in the sangha. Like this is a sangha. This group of people here, if we were, uh, if you go to meditate with them or, or learn, or like we're doing here, learning truths, this is a group, a sangha. We take rest. Like now we're not as contracted or uptight, kind of relaxed as you're listening here. Rest in the sangha. It's huge because then you get empathy and compassion for your brothers too, that rest. You get a feel, a camaraderie ship. You got these here, we are like-minded people pursuing this awakening together. It's huge, thick picture, 8 billion people. We're together here in this holy endeavor of remembering what you are and remembering what our brothers. That's called taking refuge in the Sangha. And in, in essence, the Sangha is all beings, all of humanity. But right now, we just got our group uh, a rest in the uh, Dharma, the Sangha, and the Buddha or the Christ, resting in the Christ. Where, and that stillness between thoughts, that little gap, that is Christ's spirit. It is. It's the still that in that Christ, in that stillness is spirit, clear light spirit. So you learn to take rest or refuge, shelter, shelter from the samsara, the suffering of the world. It's like an umbrella, like a tree, shades and protects and protects. Well, that's the, the truth, the, the course truths, the Sangha and the Buddha or Christ or God or God. Um, and going from awareness, ordinary awareness, to awaken awareness. And what that means, you are becoming aware of what you're thinking and doing and saying. It's huge. Awareness is like putting your attention behind your head and you're aware that there's Glenda or there's my body and then there's Glenda in front of here. That's awareness. You're aware of the images that are around you. You're aware of your thoughts, your feelings, your mood. And it becomes a capital A awareness where you become aware of the holiness. Holy Christ or Buddha is right there. You or that person. Or you look past my form like Jesus wants to do that to the spirit, the God clear light that's here or look past any person on those on the screen here, this space or air that looks like here, that is God clear light. That is spirit. That is un all union, all the vast expanse of God clear light, the living Tao, the origin of all things. It, it's spirit. It's spirit. And projected onto spirit are these forms. They lay, our forms lay on the vast expanse, on the clear light. That's why it's called a projection. It's, it rests on it, on it. And then as you awaken, the, our, all our images have all this light in the mind and the bodies in the mind. So the, all these chakras open up all this light. Your, radi your light, your light laying on the vast expanse. Because this is the Garden of Eden. All these images are the Garden of Eden. But when you awaken, everything awakens in that you remember what everything is. And you're seeing them as light, love. But you're, that's your awareness. You really, in the highest you can get in duality, is to have this capital A awareness of Christ, Buddha, this vast light and aware. What the hell you're doing? <laughs> Saying what's going on and how you're thinking it's it's you be, capital a you're in charge you're the master of your mind and this slowly builds because you're practicing and integrating the truths into your daily life we can't just say these words and read them on a piece of paper you take the words and put them into your daily life and like i'm explaining to you i didn't believe the words i you just say them just like Jesus says in the workbook to A Course in Miracles, he says, just, just say them. You don't have to believe them. 
Just practice, just use them. Then you let go, study, turn each day. Look in here, folks, make sure it didn't screw up. Take it. Oh, this is, a, this is another one that I'm learning to do. Learn that you're both the holder and being held. Now, this is pretty advanced, but guys wouldn't be here if you're not ready to listen to all this stuff. And it'll come to you whenever it's going to come to you. That you're both the holder and held. The holder is your body is the universe and your heart is all beings. When you're awakened and enlightened, your form has totally opened up. It's, it's, you've let go of the person you used to be and you're, you're just, you're light. You're, you're light. And the whole universe ends up, you end up holding the whole universe in your loving arms. Like you just put your arms out. You, when I now meditate with this Zotian LA group, I sit in my chair, I put my arms, each arm on my, each thigh, my hand up. And I picture hold, within my arms embrace, I hold the whole universe. Now it takes a little bit. You just take look at Google some pictures about the universe. It's like you see the solar system, all the stars, some planets and stuff. You just, the Holy Spirit will help you. You just condense it all down, the, whole, uh, 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 the solar system, the universe, because your heart is bigger than all the universes combined. Your Christ, Buddha, God heart is bigger than all of them. Plus you darn projected it with the collective ego. So you're going to, you hold that universe. You hold it. And then you shine light into it. You are the light of the world. So from your, your mind, and you can be your third eye, your God eye, you just visualize, you just project light into that universe. You just visualize it. Ultimately, you will feel all this. All that light's going to be coming in and out from the great right. And, it, and then you can project, you zoom it, you beam it out into the world. Granted, it naturally radiates, but your help of your brothers is to focus it on what shows up in front of your face. But in, in this case, I'm talking about holding the whole universe. And, and, and the bigger, bigger deal, if it makes it easier on you, Picture the whole universe as a manda mandala, M-A-N-D-A-L-A. -A -A. And you Google that word. And the center of that mandala is a center, um, pure opening. It's the steel axis where the, this, the, this mandala or this wheel turns, and that's the universe. And the steel center point is, is the Christ, Buddha, God, mind, God, essence, vast expanse. That projected all of that. So that's why it's the wheel. You're, the Christ, Buddha, God, essence is in the middle, projected out all these forms that's rotating in that wheel. That's the universe, but you hold it in your hands. Now, while you're in between your arms, and then as you hold that universe, just relax your shoulders and you kind of lean back. The second thing is you're held, H-E-L-D, by essence, by it. Isness, the big God, ints, the you know, the label of no labels, no description, the big power, the big source holds you. You're held while you hold the whole universe. Now let's see what else. That's that's I've only recently done that. So and the last one of the last ones here is for you to remember this too will pass. This too will pass. Everything's impermanent. Whatever shows up in front of your face today or right now, this too will pass. Meaning even our loved ones will pass. That's a hard one to go. And we still, we still do our own way of grieving and having the Holy Spirit help us. We never ever go to a funeral and ask people, why are you crying? This is all an illusion. There's nobody in that coffin. We'd never do anything how crass and evil and you know unempathetic people Oh, you know, you, you give love. But see, that's the, that's the course. A person can get that way where they're living things like that's not real. That body's not real. Granted, it's not real. But it's the Christ. Once it's enlightened and awakened, it's the Buddha Christ body. It embodies God. 
That's God. In essence, everybody walking around out there is God on the altar, which is earth, which is the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was pure, holy. Everything was going just beautiful. The great ray light was beaming in, radiating through everything. The yin and the yang, the masculine, feminine was all interwoven inside each form. Everything was going just beautiful until the son of God had a crazy idea. He wanted to be in that body. When he wanted to be in that body, he forgot he was spirit. And immediately the great, the big great ray got cut off. The light got cut off. It was coming in. The spark of light got froze. He imprisoned himself inside a body. So what you're doing is awakening to what you are, this Christ, spirit, and light. But this really is the Garden of Eden. It really is because it's light and love. It's just, in, it's images projected that are light and love. It's all God. But again, we don't walk out in front of a car, put the body in harm's way. You do, and you just do the best you can at these practices. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Your path will, is your specific path. My path, my path. I just share things that I've done and learned because, oh, and Joanne had to leave. She says, thanks for being here, for uh, uh, all of us for being here, is I just share, hoping to help any of you, you could maybe eliminate years of some work because I, I, I didn't have anybody explain to me, just do it. You don't have to believe it. Just say all of it, everything that shows up in front of your face. <laughs> See, I didn't know what I was doing. It took me four years saying that before all this light started being released. But that wasn't the whole thing. I was having a premature immaculation. My mind had to awaken. My heart had to open. All the chakras had to open up. The subtle energy fields. Uh, my third eye. There's a third ear. There's all these senses. See, we're not a body. We are free. We are light. We are spirit. And that shows um, up as this opening up of all these uh, areas in your form. It's a miraculous thing, the embodiment of Christ, Buddha, God. But it's a reality. And that's your true self is what, by you doing all this, this comes to now, it's a little bit after eight. Does anyone have any questions or thoughts? I thank you, thank you for coming out tonight. Yes, Miss Barbie, just unmute yourself. Okay, my lesson of the day is 191. I am the holy son of God himself. Now the prayer continues with, I cannot suffer, cannot be in pain, I cannot lose, or can I fail to do all that salvation asks? Pretty, it's, it's so it's not funny but it's so interesting that whatever subject you you're talking about I that the day or the week of the day and it's like oh my god we must be interconnected somehow it's true see we are is that's a powerful word interconnected interbeing meaning one mind we touch minds and almost clairvoyant ESP, whatever you want to talk about. Now that lesson said you can't suffer and some other things now and can't have pain. But the thing is, of course, the form can feel pain. Yeah, we can yeah. feel pain and we can feel suffering. Now I still take Tylenol and I, boy, if I had an infection, I could get an antibiotic, you know, while I'm practicing that I am Christ Buddha, God, that lesson you are you are yeah. uh -huh. because it, one paragraph i'll just say the paragraph nine it says you who perceive yourself as weak and frail with futile hopes and devastated dreams born but to die to weep and suffer pain hear this all is given you unto the earth and heaven there is nothing that you cannot do you play the game of death by being helpless pitiful tied to disillusion in a world that shows no mercy to you. Yet when you accord at mercy, it will merely shine on you. Well, and I should clarify, you could, if a person has pain or physical suffering or physical pain, they can be immediately healed as well. 
It's yeah, true. It can or not. And that's for some chapter where the only place Jesus uses the word compromise is when we can use magic. That's the compromise. As we're waking up from the dream, that magic are the meds, the vitamins, the doctors, the things, acupuncture, you know, psychotherapy, whatever we use in uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, if somebody has an addiction, because these egoic things can be deep and hard. The ego just grabbing onto people. We use all the tools we can to let go and wake up from all these attachments. But read the title of that lesson again, please. When I am the Holy Son of God himself. Mm -hmm. 191. Yeah. That's the crux of all these 10 points. Yeah. Each time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's the whole course of miracles. And that's Dzogchen Buddhism. You're the Christ Buddha nature. We've just forgotten. And it's okay. It's not a walk of shame either. Picture this when you meditate and you recognize, oh, my mind just went off wandering. Some it's called the walk of shame when people go, oh man, my mind was off wandering. Ah, what's wrong with me? Then you just bring it back to the center, to the whatever you call it, the vast expanse or whatever. And then you are aware the mind wandered again. You just bring it back. It's huge and it's powerful to be able to be aware when the mind wanders and bring it back to this, the, this vast spaciousness, the clear light or whatever you're, you're uh, pausing, you're mm, resting in. Um, and that's what we're just practicing. We're doing the best we can at this. Oh, and the thoughts. You remember when we used to be 100% egoic thoughts? Now we might be 80% egoic and 20 Holy Spirit or... Even think when it gets 50-50, people are going, why am I still having an ego thought? Well, that's the way it goes. But 50-50 is huge because you got one and two chance, which, you know, which of these thoughts is Holy Spirit or ego. But the egoic thoughts will never stop. Holy Spirit's always there to help you, guide you, or help you if you choose again. How you know if something, Alvaro asked this question at the course, big course meeting, he couldn't tell the difference of the voices. And what came to me was when I feel confused, that means I'm hearing the two voices, the ego or Holy Spirit, then just stop. I stop. I wait. I pause. I don't do either one of whatever the two voices are saying. Then maybe later I'm brushing my teeth or washing dishes or whatever. And a thought will come to the mind of what to do in that solution or in that deal, whatever the question was or thought. You do it, and then we adapt. Let's say it didn't turn out exactly how look, you, might, you might want it or whatever. You adapt to that. Then you go again with well, that's in the flow. The Holy Spirit guide me what to do or say. And you're um, adapting to, you don't have to accept everything that shows up in front of you. You can talk to a person. I, you know, you hurt my feelings. I'm granted, no one can hurt your feelings. But I'm honest and say, I, you know, let's communicate. Here's how I took what you said. Here's what you, and that's a loving communication that you're developing because we're living in this body. We want to, that's called going with the flow. You're, you're living in it and you're adjusting and adapting with what's showing up in front of your face. Um, it's a lovely, spontaneous way of living. We're not fighting it resisting, irritated, then that tells me I've had attachment or aversion, lean back into Holy Spirit and, and ha have him guide me what to do or say. I'm using my feelings and my mood then to help me, direct me how to live this daily life. This to end while you're awakening in the dream. But that's where I'm at now is being spontaneous. Like uh, a thought will come, I, my habits, my routine patterns have changed. I don't do the same thing I, I've done every day for years. It's changed. It moves around. I'm going by what thoughts are coming in my mind. And then if my sister calls and says something, I'm aware. What was it she's saying? She's needing help or wanting, can we do this or whatever? Then I'm adjusting with that. That's a flow. See, life and spirit of Christ Buddha is moving through everything to your highest good. So even when I'm irritated and angry, that's called grist for the mill in this Dzogchen Buddhism, because then I'm remembering, well, why am I angry or upset with that? 
then I'm bringing that to my attention, my awareness, and practicing advanced forgiveness on that person or item where I truly wasn't thinking of them as holy. <laughs> no. and, but yet I can still have discussions. You can still have disagreements, but it's how long you're attached or pushing things away. Uh, things flow. Things will be flowing, folks. This um, hard to explain. Any other thoughts or questions before I stop the recording? Now, um, while people are thinking about if there's a thought or question, let's take a couple of tiles, or we've got so few, or not so few. On the screen, let's practice advanced forgiveness on every person that's here. It's marvelous. Everyone that's here, you are, it's so beautiful. Each of you that are here, it's so great that you took time out of your day or your evening to be here and share and be, because believe it or not, even though it's Zoom, your light, your energy, it is felt. I am shocked by, I've done Zoom now, so, you know, since COVID, thank God for COVID, or I wouldn't be having a Zoom meeting because all my meetings used to be in person in my local community. Then I never would be talking with all of you in various cities and states and like Shabon is in Ireland, Julia's in California. I forget where everybody is. Oh, but uh, Nancy's California, everybody are all kinds of different places. But through Zoom, these transmissions of light, truce, and energy happen. You just are relaxed and you're, and you're willing, you're open. It's beautiful. So now on each person, just say all of it to each person that's here in our meeting. Yes. Yes, Sean, I'll email. I'll email you the list. See, now see how simple that was? That didn't take hardly, what, a second per each tile? Now what happens is, it's huge. I'm telling you, this is so huge, you don't know how huge this is. How you think of another person is how you think of yourself. This went into your unconscious mind. And then the Holy Spirit can heal all kinds of things that we can't get to. It's huge, huge, huge. I didn't know how huge it was. Powerful, powerful practice, what we're doing. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Barbie, God. Thank you, thank you. Angela, God. Thank you, thank you. Ella, God. Thank you, thank you. Alvaro, God. Thank you, thank you. Nance, God. Thank you, thank you, Julia, God. Thank you, thank you, Sean, God. Thank you, Joanna, God. Let's see. And uh, Ju um, Saban, God. Thank you, thank you for coming out tonight, for being here. It's delightful. Now, what happens is, I, when I stop the recording, just for those that watch this YouTube video later, if you want, people can stay and get to know each other, chat a little bit. If they want, if not, then they just leave the meeting. Oh, and if a person wants this document that, that where I search the course for Arc, Spark of Light, Great Ray, Ray, I have a document that has that. I have a document where I search then advanced forgiveness in the course where Jesus writes about it that makes it perfectly clear. And then there's a, a meditation that's in the course that I did four years, although I supplemented it with this sky gazing meditation of Zochian. And then there's a there's a document in one of Gary Renard's books, Art and Persa give Gary these lists of things a person can do to relax the form the, as they practice Jesus's advanced forgiveness, like massaging the head, the ears. There's things you can do as you practice forgiveness on yourself or whatever people are in your house or TV you're looking at, because you're relaxing the ego because it, it gets constricted as you're practicing this truth. It wants to not like this. It gets contracted. So there's ways to relax and so you incorporate this. And oh, one final point that just came to mind when I did my hands this way is in when the separation occurred, if this great ray light column was cut off from coming in the body, the chakras are still here. And within the subtle energy fields, there's called yin and yang. 
There are two energy fields. Um, so picture when the one when the great ray lights cut off, you can't the form can't feel this oneness. Then what's left? See, and yin and yang was created by the big son of God as well in the forms in the Garden of Eden. Yin and yang's going, everything's flowing, perfect and one. Yin and yang are interwoven as one. If you look at pictures on Google, a picture of yin and yang, it's one. It's not separate. But when the great ray column of light gets got cut, yin and yang are can be opposite forces. So in duality, then, they're opposite, masculine and feminine. That's the duality, two-ness. That then causes all this, this uh, attachment and aversion, chaos. You got two forces that are not working together. In the enlightenment and waking process, the yin and yang energies will get co um, interweaved, interweaved, interwoven back together. That's part of the process. And the chakras all open. I mean, because there's only, there's not two-ness, there's just oneness. So these are processes and steps. Now, granted, I, I, I did, there were various steps, but some people can shoot through these really quickly. I never, I never know. It's not my deal to judge it. I just share all this because you're open up to Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit can do miracles, miraculous healings, miraculous joining, rejoinings. Because see, we've never been separate. These are all an illusion, an hallucination, a dream fantasy delusion but yet um we believe it we believe we're a body or we wouldn't be a body here experiencing we're a body so that's why we're using the mind to awaken that we're we're not a body but yet we end up being in embodying christ buddha god in the world with them christ buddha or god using your hands your speech your ears your vision to help your brothers wake up. That's the ultimate deal. You, you really help. You. And even as you're awakening, picture people you think of. It's so uh, hugely powerful. When you think of a person, your family members, politicians, anybody on TV, actors, it doesn't matter. Your, your plumber, uh, you see a, you're out walking, you see an electrician truck, truck and you remember, oh, Buddha, Christ, all of it. Then you just go on. It, that your highest thing you can do to a person is, is say what they are. <laughs> then ultimately you'll remember what they are and what you are. But it's huge because you don't know it. That touches them. They don't even know it, but it's touching their uh, light and spirit. Their light and spirit, that touches. Holy Spirit will use that. Holy Spirit multiplies your thoughts and intentions. I don't even know the exponential amount to help your brothers eh? as you think of them. Bottom line, then you think of yourself. Anyway, thank you all for coming out. I'm going to stop the recording now.